G'day everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the 10 features that I really want to see in the Fuji X-H1. Let me begin by saying that I'm primarily a still shooter and I think the Fuji X-T2 is damn near the perfect stills camera for me but I've also really been enjoying using it for video and a lot of the videos I make for this channel are at least in part recorded on the Fuji X-T2. While the footage out of the X-T2 is in my rather novice filmmaking opinion, really beautiful just as it is, I do see some definite room for improvement in the ergonomics and functionality side of things. If the rumors are true, thank you to Fuji Rumors for being on top of them. We should have the official release of the Fuji X-H1 on February 14 or 15, depending where in the world you live. The leaked specs have already outlined some really cool features of the X-H1, with the inclusion of 5-axis in-body image stabilization probably being the most talked about by far. Now the latest rumor update is that it may also in fact work with optical image stabilization. And that's going to be a pretty big deal, something they thought wasn't going to be possible to begin with. They're also suggesting that autofocus is going to be faster than the X-C2, and while that's always going to be welcomed, what I really want to see improved is the ability to lock focus on a stationary subject in continuous focus mode, without hunting back and forth because at the moment it's not accurate or reliable enough. I think the X-T2 does a better job with this in 1080p, but I really want to see this feature improve in 4K and include face detection, which it currently can't do. In terms of the video quality, the rumor is the 4K specs will be 1.17 crop, which is the same as X-T2, 30p, 8-bit and 200 megabits per second, compared to the 100 megabits per second on the X-T2. What hasn't been rumored is the ability to shoot 4K at 60 FPS and 1080p at 120 FPS. That's something that I'd really want to see and something that I think Fuji really needs to implement if they want to compete with Panasonic and Sony. Currently, the X-T2 will only record F-Log to an external recording device, so the ability to record internally would be very welcomed by any serious videographer or filmmaker. This isn't a huge deal breaker for me at this early stage of my videography journey, as the Fuji Film Simulations offer some great looking footage straight out of the camera, but I know it's an important feature to have and something I'm sure that I will utilize in the future. There's also a rumor of a so-called 4K photo feature, but there hasn't really been much detail yet. One speculation is that it will be kind of a time-lapse feature, and I really hope it is. The ability to generate a 4K time-lapse video in camera is definitely something I'd be keen on, even more so if it had the ability to perform auto exposure on every frame, which would give it the ability to make fairly smooth transitions in changing lighting conditions. For example, the holy grail of time-lapse, shooting a sunrise or sunset, The rumor is the X-H1 will have the same three-way tilt screen of the X-T2 with the addition of a touch function. If this is true, I'll be a little bit disappointed as I would personally love to see a fully articulated flip-out screen. As a solo photographer who rarely has an assistant to help with filming all the behind-the-scenes footage, I have to film myself. So having a flip-out screen would make my life so much easier. With the X-T2, I have to use an external monitor, such as the small HD focus, just to be able to monitor the frame and just see what's happening. Something else that hasn't really been talked about is adding a blinking recording light to the front of the camera. If they aren't going to include a flip out screen, the least they could do is add a blinking light to the front of the camera, just to indicate when it is actually recording. Too many times I've had the recording stop for some unexplained reason, and as I've been in front of the camera as a subject, I've had no way of knowing that it's actually stopped. Currently when using the X-T2 with the vertical power booster grip, it gives you the ability to have three batteries installed, which you would think would mean a continuous power supply until all three batteries are dead. Wrong. 
what actually happens if a battery goes flat is the recording just annoyingly stops. It can't be that hard to allow the recording to continue while it switches over to the next battery, can it? Fuji, can it? Same thing goes with the memory card. Currently, if the first card fills, the recording just stops instead of automatically switching to the second card. What makes matters worse is that it's not as simple as just pressing the shutter button to start recording. You have to physically change the cards over before you can start recording again because the second card slot won't record video at all. I don't have a lot of experience shooting in any of the auto exposure modes in the XE2 because I always shoot fully manually but I can definitely see the advantage of using auto exposure in some circumstances. The problem is at the moment the XC2 doesn't do any smooth transitions between apertures or even when adjusting ISO. There is some obvious exposure stepping visible in the footage which makes it very less than ideal. Lastly, the audio level indicators on the XC2 are pretty inaccurate and therefore kind of useless. All I use them for is to actually see that it's recording audio, but I don't use them for gauging any kind of levels. Okay, so that's my top 10 things I would like to see on the Fuji X-H1 as either new features or improvements over the X-C2. What do you guys think? Did I forget anything? Is there anything else that you really want to see? Let me know in the comments below. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks again for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and until I see you in the next video, ciao for now.